Um, I was honestly surprised a little bit, but it was it's it's always an honor to have the Missouri Valley Conference choose you. So that was the voice of one of the budding stars for Saluki women's basketball, AJ Catcher, who was just named the Missouri Valley Conference Newcomer of the Week after two wins for Saluki women's basketball against Evansville. Welcome to another Saluki Standards Podcast. I'm your host, Connor Onion, and on this episode, we'll talk to the Valley Newcomer of the Week, A.J. Catcher. Uh, two wins for SIU. They're 2-0 and after the wins against Evansville. A.J. Catcher almost averaged a double-double. Assist numbers, steal numbers were good, too. And on Friday, the first win for SIU, she had 14 rebounds, which was the best for a Saluki freshman since Abby Brockmeyer did that her freshman year against Evansville. AJ was also great on defense, held the Valley freshman of the year, Abby fight to a career low four points and played basically the entire game guarding the best player on the other team. So uh, rebounding defense scoring, it was all there for AJ in her first weekend of conference play and her and the Salukis will try to make it three and zero this weekend when they go to Bradley you can follow those games with Ryan Kent Jr. starting at 5.45 on Friday. It'll be a 4 o'clock tip from Renaissance Coliseum at Bradley on Saturday. Both games can be heard on 95.1 uh, locally and on siusalukis.com. So check Ryan out and check out the Salukis this weekend. And uh, thanks for coming here. Saluki Standards Podcast welcomes AJ Catcher to the show. Where were you when you got the news that you were the newcomer of the week? Um, I was in the locker room. I just got finished with practice and just looked at my phone and a couple of teammates said the same and all just congratulated me on the honor. And I can't thank my coaches and teammates for it. I mean, it's not all me. It's them too. How'd you react? Um, I was honestly surprised a little bit, but it was, it's, it's always an honor to have the Missouri Valley conference choose you. So I know this is a little bit touchy in the era of COVID, but uh, being in the locker room with your teammates, did they, did they mob you or anything like that? (laughs) (laughs) No, they didn't, but without COVID, I definitely think they would have. (laughs) <laughs> for sure. I was uh, reading the story uh, in the local newspaper for you back home. You were named the area athlete of the year last year, and you hid that honor from your parents for a little bit. Were you able to, were you able to sneak this one in on them? Could you hide it from them for a little bit? Um, not really. I mean, I was getting ready, so I didn't really talk to anybody about it for like probably 40 minutes. But as soon as I was able to kind of settle down and look at my phone some more, I definitely told them right away. What mom and dad think? They were really excited. They're always so happy for me and everything I do. So anything that I get, they're they're super excited about. Are they big advice people? I know you you said they've been able to come down and watch you play a little bit. Will they give you advice on your game at all? Yeah, definitely. My dad for sure will give me advice. And my mom's always super happy for everything I do. I mean, she'll give me advice, but I definitely go to my dad a little bit more. What's uh, he think about what you've done so far your freshman year? Um, I think that I've played my role, you know. I think I've, I've done what my team needs me to do, and that's all you can really ask for, um, especially with teammates being out and stuff. Like, it's super hard, but just whatever coach asks me to do, whatever my teammates need me to do, that's what I'll do. I mean, there was um... – I mean, there was probably some added responsibility that you were feeling this past weekend. Abby Brockmeyer, Mackenzie Sylvie were out with COVID protocol. Um, I mean, how much of that fueled what you ended up doing in the two weekend games? Yeah, I'm not sure my mindset changed too much. I think just with them being out, I got a lot more touches. So it just allowed me to do a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't think my mindset was any different. Just play what the team needed me to do. Abby is usually down there helping you out on the backboards, rebounding. And that first game, you had 14 rebounds. Um, what were you most proud of in your performance in that first game? Um, honestly, I think that I was most proud of how we defended fight and the rest of that team. They are really good three point shooters. 
So I think that I didn't realize I was getting that many rebounds. Honestly, I think I was just playing to win and that's what my team needed me to do to win. So I did that. So when did you figure out, oh my gosh, I had a, I had a huge rebounded game. Was it after the game? Yeah, we were in the locker room and um, the coaches usually talk about, you know, who did really well and stuff. And they told me I had 14 and I didn't even, didn't phase me, I guess. I was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> You're just used to it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> in in high school, you were taller than a lot of the players you're guarding, I would guess. And now there's, you know, there are players like Abby Fight who are about the same size as you. What's been the biggest uh, adjustment and change in seeing bigger, faster players for you? Um, I think it definitely just um, makes me think about boxing out more, you know, just being quicker on my feet because I don't have the length on them as I usually do in high school. So just being mindful that I am smaller than them and I need to think about moving my feet more and being quicker versus getting away with my length. When did that kind of hit you that it was a level up? Was it your first game? Was it your first possession? When was it? Oh, it, it was definitely the first practice, I would say, you know, just playing with – um some other people. I don't know. I mean, I definitely think like just playing pickup games with the team definitely was what got me for sure. Was there somebody that kind of gave you that wake up moment in one of those practices or scrimmages? Um, I don't know. I think I'm not sure if anybody really did, I guess. I just wasn't getting rebounds like, you know, you would in high school where you just go up and get them, but you never know. So you're one of two freshmen that has started this year, uh, but you do have a, a pretty good core of seniors around you at the same time. So there's kind of that mix of youth and experience, but players like Gabby and Abby specifically in the post and Rachel plays a little bit down there and having McKenzie, what's rubbed off on you from playing with those veteran players? Um, I think that they've really just helped me grow and be more, more confident that I can do well down there. Even when I am kind of undersized, they do help me learn different things, you know, how to defend the post, what post moves to use, you know, just little things that I wouldn't have known coming in. So it's just super helpful to have them and learn from them and get better with them. Who do you typically guard in practice? Um, it depends, honestly. Um, I guard them all. I guard Gabby. I guard Abby. I guard Janelle. You know, I guard Rachel. I guard them all. It's just the way things go. So it gets me better. That's for sure. Let's, uh, I guess we don't have to go like one by one, but I'm interested in, in guarding Abby. Uh, what's, what's made you better from guarding Abby in practice? Um, just keeping my feet moving, you know, she does have a way of moving side to side in the posts, you know, just keeping my feet moving. That's definitely helpful. And, you know, getting out up on post because some posts can shoot from three like Abby can. So you got to make sure you get out on them too. And then Gabby's a very different player. She's powerful. She's physical. She's strong. How, how has that challenged you seeing her in practice? Um, getting around her for sure. Like she's, like you said, very physical. So just not giving her the contact, you know, and moving around her. That's definitely helped me for sure. You probably didn't see a player like Gabby in Iowa high school basketball, did you? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, with some of that experience in the post around you, how do you think you've kind of found your fit and um, gotten in there right away and, and made an impact? Um, yeah, I think they just, they've increased my level of play and it's just helped to transfer into games. I mean, getting better every day and practice from them is going to help me in the future every time. I, I read something about how you kind of remodeled your jump shot heading into college. What tweaks did you make from your senior year of high school to now? Um, I think I just, the ball was, my shot was just never consistent. So I think we just had to find a spot to shoot from that made it consistent, you know? So just getting reps of the same form over and over versus changing my shot every season. Cause I did go from sport to sport so I don't think my shot ever looked the same until I got here, really. So, I mean, did, were you winding it up from, like, the other side of your – that that was kind of the description I read, that you were, like, kind of winding it up from the other side of your head compared to, like, yeah, off your like right I, ear. Yeah, I didn't have the ball, like, on the right side. I had it more, like, middle this side, so then I was shooting, like, at a weird angle. So just moving it to the right side and making it a lot more fluid is definitely what changed. 
Are you making more shots now? Definitely. <laughs> I, sure. I know it can be hard when it's kind of muscle memory to, to make that tweak. How long did it take to make that move with your technique on the jump shot? Uh, I think it's still definitely a work in progress when we talk about from deep range. Um, but I definitely think that I'm starting to really get that mid-range shot down. So as soon as I feel comfortable with getting that finished, then I'll start to move out to the outside and see how I feel there. Were you a good high school shooter? Oh, um, I mean, I like to say I was, but I mean, I was inconsistent every time, but I didn't make stuff. It just wasn't the same every time, I guess. Right. Who or what led to that change or that realization that maybe the, the change in your jump shot would help you now that you're in college? Um, well, in high school, I've always had like a ton of different people telling me how to change it, you know, and giving me advice on how to change it. But of course, nobody ever really said the same thing. So it wasn't until I got here this summer that I sat down with player development stuff with Coach Jody. And just her advice and knowing her experience with everything just led, my, led to me changing my shot the way it is now. How long did it take for it to actually feel comfortable? It took a little bit. It took a while, but I got there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was there film or anything like that that you watched of other players to kind of get the idea of where you needed to be? Um, yeah, she showed, she told me a couple, I couldn't tell you who they were now. I can't remember, but there were a couple of players that she said were really good shooters and that I could watch them. And I, I did, and I watched them and figured it out. Who did you model growing up? Oh, it was when I, when I was growing up, I loved Iowa women's basketball just cause that was who we were fans of. So Jamie Printy was one of the, the big people that I was a fan of because she was really big at Iowa and she was from my area. So I always loved to model her and her play. She was just super scrappy and she was obviously a really good shooter. So I loved watching her. Did you guys go see the Iowa games in person when you were growing up? Yeah, we did. And I went to every camp growing up from like fifth grade till probably eighth grade. I went there. So, so did you get to work with Jamie at those camps? I did. I did. And her brother was actually my coach for one of my teams one year. So it was fun to see that rivalry between them. So you, do you keep up with her now or, or not really? I mean, a couple times, my parents go to the Iowa football games and ironically her seat is right behind my parents. So they talk about me a little bit, but otherwise I don't see her very much. <laughs> she's probably thinking AJ's all grown up. She was at that camp. Now she's, now she's doing her thing in college. Oh Yeah. <laughs> You, uh, we've talked a little bit about this before, how you're playing a million sports in high school. You're playing three sports in high school, good at all of them, cross country and soccer too. Uh, but now that you've just focused on basketball, what do you feel like you've learned about yourself as a basketball player? Um, I think that I didn't realize really how much stuff I did that was not in the stat line, you know, like just like the little things I didn't realize I was doing just learned how to do an AAU in high school and I grant my coaches for that but I think my strength is something I didn't realize I really had as much either just because I would always slim down a little bit for cross country and I didn't really have to use my arms very much you know in soccer so I don't think I realized really how strong I can be and how strong I really am until I got to college. So you, you started to realize you you've got some pretty good natural tools is, is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, like I didn't realize I had it until I got here, I guess. Yeah. I remember you saying with cross country, it was just kind of like something you did to stay in shape for basketball and you end up being a multi-time state champion. I mean, that's that's somewhat ridiculous that you could just kind of <laughs> show up and do it and, and be great at it. Yeah, I know a lot of people were kind of confused a little bit when they saw I was going to be playing basketball in college and not running, but... I just, I learned to really love running as I got later into my years. And I think I'll definitely continue when I don't have anything else to do after basketball. <laughs> run, run some five K's and some half marathon stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Still stay in some more shape. <laughs> how, how long are you willing to stretch it out on a long distance run? I mean, what's the, the furthest you've ever run without stopping? Well, I mean, for practice, I think the longest I ran was, I think it was like eight miles is probably my longest, but I'm not sure I'd be able to just 
go say, Hey, I'm going to run eight miles today. I don't know if I'd ever do that again. <laughs> so, I mean, is there a marathon in, in your future? I know that's, that's not quite I mean, halfway there, but do you think that's something you might do after basketball? Um, possibly, honestly, it could be, I just, you know, haven't thought that far ahead, I guess. <laughs> might just show up one day like you did with cross country and do it. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> What's what's the biggest difference in basketball conditioning versus cross country conditioning? Oh, it's it's completely different muscles. Honestly, it's your endurance versus your speed, and um, being able to stay in a defensive stance in a basketball stance for a long period of time. Like in cross country, you basically get to stand up, you know. So just the different stance you have to be able to move for a long time in, in a quick way is so much different. Do you feel some of that cross country conditioning powering you through some of the late moments in games or, or is the difference that stark that you, you totally had to rebuild yourself to play college basketball? Um, I definitely think that like just the mental toughness that cross country requires has definitely helped me to get through and to work hard through different places in the game where you have to work through being tired. So I think that's definitely probably helped me the most, I would say. When you were running a race in cross country, when did you feel like you were at your best? When did you start separating yourself from the pack and uh, kind of, kind of cruising toward that finish line when you would win races. Um, I would say after two miles, I think there's people that stuck with me for about a mile and a half, two miles. And then after that second mile, I just pulled away from them, I guess. Do you think there's a basketball equivalent to that? Like, I don't know, third quarter or mid third quarter when you, you got that extra edge? Um, possibly. I mean, I think that when I'm in really good shape for basketball, I think that could definitely be the case, you know, be a little bit more in shape than they are, but yeah, probably. How close were you to running or playing soccer in college? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I was ever going to play soccer. I just don't think I was ever that caliber of a soccer player, but Running, I never really thought about that. I think I've always thought of basketball as being what I was going to do in college. So I don't know if they really had much of a chance. But the question was definitely came up when people were asking me why I wasn't running. But I just decided I loved basketball and I was going to enjoy it a lot more than I would if I ran in college. Yeah, what do you tell running people when they're like, what, what are you doing? You, you win three state championships and you're not going to do it in college? What do you tell people that are passionate about that sport? Um, I tell them that I, I love to run and that I really enjoy the sport. I just love basketball more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when did SIU kind of first set sights on you to get you to come play basketball here? Um, I, I came to a couple camps um, in the summer, um, but they had – reached out to me before I came to my first camp and I just kind of got to know them and talked to them, kind of looked up what their school was, you know, how, what it looked like, what they offered, found they had my degree. So I was like, that's always a plus because college, you're getting an education. That's what you're here for. Um, and then after camp, they just, I did really well that day and they offered me and I said, thanks. And I'll think about it. And then, Late, that was like in June, I think it was. So then like a couple months later, I had kind of chosen who was interested still, you know, what all the different universities offered and just decided that SIU couldn't be beat out. Nobody was going to beat them out. So what was your first impression when you came to that camp? I mean, did it feel like this is a place that you would want to come right away or did it take some researching and, and talking to the coaches to, to get to that point? Um, I just, I really liked the, they seemed really interested in me. Like they always were giving me advice at camp, you know, and all the players were super nice and I enjoyed it a lot. There wasn't anything that I didn't like about the camp. And when we drove around campus, I thought it was beautiful. So there was, there's nothing to not like about them. I would say. How much did the staff come see you play in high school? How much, how much were they actually there in person for your high school games? Well, considering it's six and a half hours away, that's kind of hard. I wouldn't blame them for not coming. Um, but I do remember they came, they came a couple times. I know that. But 
like I said, that's a long drive. I wouldn't blame them for not wanting to do that. I mean, that's, that's got to mean a lot to you that it is six and a half hours away. A lot of the recruiting is Illinois, Missouri, you know, sometimes I guess Indiana, Ohio, but I mean, they, they still wanted you bad, even though you're far away. That's, that's gotta be flattering, right? Definitely. Definitely. But I think AAU is what really got them to see me most. So for sure. You're right there in the middle of Drake and you and I country where you grew up. How close were you to going to Drake or you and I? Um, I, I don't think you and I ever really looked at me personally. I went to their camp one time, but they, it just wasn't the same thing as like what I got at SIU. Um, Drake was looking at me for a while, but I just decided that SIU would be better for me because one, you'd get away from Iowa, you know, like, I don't know anybody here personally that has gone to Iowa or been from Iowa or went to my school or anything. So like, I think it's really cool to get away from all of that, you know, and meet new people and find new relationships and stuff. COVID will stop this from happening, but when fans can be there, how many people are you going to have in the stands at you and I and Drake? Oh, I'm going to have a lot. I know that for sure. I mean, my dad works at in like Cedar Falls, Waterloo area. So I know a ton of his like clients and employees and all that stuff will be there. And I've already gotten so many like text messages from coaches and people saying they can't wait when they can come watch me someday. So yeah, that's, that'll be pretty neat. I bet. Yeah. What's been the most difficult part about moving away from home and being far away? I mean, yeah, I, I miss my family a lot. I definitely do. I'm really close with them. So that's, that's really hard, but also just like being a division one basketball athlete specifically is seeing all your friends and everybody go home for Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, getting to see each other and not being able to be a part of that is, is really hard and probably one of the hardest things for sure. Yeah, we were, we were talking about it before we got on just how hard I'm, I'm sure it has to be when you get your two tickets for the game, you get a couple of family members that can come in, but then like normal, you can't, you can't hug them. You can't really say hi to them from a close distance. I mean, that's, that's gotta be a huge challenge, right? For sure. It's, it's really hard. And I know my family, they respect all of the rules and they want to follow everything. And I mean, that's where I come from. So it's just, it's super hard not to give them a hug or get close to them, but I know it's, it's what's best for the team. So. You're the oldest of four girls in your family. What do you think your sisters think of what you're doing right now? You kind of being the role model as the oldest and, and playing a division one sport. Um, I think they think it's really cool. I think my youngest sister is a little young to really realize everything about it, but I know my oldest younger sister, she, we're, we're probably the closest of the three. And I think she's, she's really happy for me, but she used this really good analogy. How She's not very tall. So she's like, you look like me, but in college, you know, cause she's not very tall on the court. So she just thinks it's funny that I'm shorter on the court now since that's the way she is in high school. But I think they really enjoy watching me and they're really excited to come watch. So is, is she hoping she's going to sprout up and be as tall as you? Is that kind of what she's getting at? <laughs> oh, she wants to, she wants to, but she knows she's not getting any taller. <laughs> really? So you got, you got the good genes then. I did. And then my, so Denny's the middle of the three and she's really tall too. So she might be taller than I am, but the other two didn't get too much height. <laughs> <laughs> are, uh, are the other three sisters, do you think they're future basketball players or are they exploring some of the other sports? Um, I know that Cora, my oldest younger sister, isn't looking to play a sport in college. Um, but she loves to play basketball. She loves to play softball too is one of her favorite sports. Um, I think that Denny will continue to play basketball. She really loves it and she's tall and stuff. But then my youngest, she's playing it all. She was playing softball. She's playing soccer. She's just having a good time. You know, she's younger, so I'm not too sure about her yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know there's some spread in, in the ages, but I mean, how competitive were you guys with each other growing up? We're, we're really competitive. Our family 
is really competitive and, you know, we love to win. So when we play two on two in the backyard, we'd have to be so competitive during playing that. It's just hard because, you know, she is so young. You can't just go all over the place. But, no, we're really competitive with everything we do. Would you ever let up on the younger ones? Um, I would. I would. But there's sometimes I would just let it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what's the best story between the four of you of things getting, uh, getting competitive out in those two-on-two games in the driveway? Oh, I would definitely say it was a basketball. Honestly, we would play basketball 2v2 in the backyard on the court. There were some times where it got really physical and it got really intense, you know? So as competitive as I am, I'd have to be like, okay, guys, it's okay. We can, we can back off a little bit, but it was definitely those 2v2 games in the backyard. Any fists flying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not quite, not quite, no. <laughs> not quite, but it got physical. Yeah. Uh, your dad was a wrestling coach for a little bit growing up. What rubbed off on you about, you know, the environment that he was in and, uh, seeing some of his meets and, and seeing what he did? Um, yeah, I grew, I was, I was really young, but I think just that you could just tell if you walk into like a wrestling duel or wrestling meet that you can just feel like the competitive nature in the air, you know, cause that you can just see it when watching wrestling, just how competitive it is. So I think without realizing it, that just kind of rubbed off on me. Mm -hmm. I mean, did, um, did, uh, how, how did they do? Did he have success as a coach? Did they go to the state meet a couple of times? I mean, what was, yeah, what was kind of his he, track record? Um, he was really successful there. Um, I know there was like looking back now, I remember looking back and he sent almost all of his wrestlers to state one year. Like he was really successful there. Yeah. And that's, that's a big deal in Iowa, right? I know it is at the university, but high school wrestling is a huge deal. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's huge in Iowa and especially in that area. So mm -hmm. And then uh, your mom played some basketball too. I, I think I read that she played six player basketball back when it was six player basketball. What stories has she shared with you about her glory days playing the game? <laughs> oh, she just always talked about how like lucky we are now to play five and five because you would only get to play one side of the court defense or offense. And she goes five and five is so much more up and down the court. You know, you have to be in better shape. Like, she just loves the game now, you know, she loved it back then. And I think it's just, she loves talking about how you play both sides now. So what was she, was she an offensive player, or a defensive player? I think she was an offensive player. I couldn't tell you for a fact, but I'm almost positive. She's an offensive. So it's a big deal that you're a, a defensive stopper now, or at least you were this weekend because she didn't have <laughs> yeah, the opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's very true. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, finally, uh, major in exercise science. Um, so you want to be a physical therapist. What uh, led you to want to pursue that? Um, in high school, I've had quite a few just like little injuries, you know, just kind of things that are annoying, but were never super serious. Um, so I was always going to get treatment and just seeing what it is so I could fix it, you know, so I didn't have to sit out or anything. And I just grew to love my physical therapist back home. Um, she helped me a lot and I just thought I would want to do that for other people in the future. Having some injuries and playing three sports, was there ever a moment where you're like, eh, maybe I should cut one out and slow things down a little bit? Um, I know there's people that wanted me to, but I, Every time somebody told me I couldn't do something, I just wanted to prove them wrong. So mm -hmm. I just continued to play through stuff because I knew I could. How did your physical therapist empower that? Um, she She's hesitant. She's was always hesitant with me playing on injuries because she goes, well, it's not the best option. But she, was, she supported me in doing both. So that's really all I can do, you know, is just trust her support. Right. Right. Well, um, looking forward to seeing what you do with that and the rest of your basketball career. And, uh, I'm sure we will do this again at some point in your four years here. Sounds good. Good luck at Bradley, AJ. Thank you.
That's AJ Catcher, the MVC Newcomer of the Week, freshman from Urbana, Iowa, here on the Saluki Standards Podcast.